So I wanna look at things like control flow. So to do that, we are gonna create ourselves a nice little uh, Fibonacci function. So we're gonna get rid of this var here. We're gonna call this fib. And then I think we will uh, just have a single parameter, which is n uh, int. And we're gonna return an int there. So again, all that we're gonna do is pass in a number of the Fibonacci sequence and then return that back out. So if you don't know what Fibonacci is, you can go and look it up, but Fibonacci sequence very quickly is the Fibonacci of a number is the sum of the previous two Fibonacci uh, numbers in the sequence. So essentially Fib3 is equal to Fib2 plus Fib1. So if you think about that, what we really want to be able to do is as long as the n is greater than 1, we want to return uh, fib uh, n minus 1 plus fib n minus 2. And of course, if it's less than 1, we want to essentially return uh, n. Let me show you what I mean there. So to do that, we need an if statement. This is control flow. Uh, if n is greater than 1. Uh, we were gonna put in the uh, colon here, and again, it's gonna follow that offside ruling. So my scope is within that if statement is controlled by indentation. So I can say result is equal to fib uh, n minus one plus uh, fib n minus two. And we can save that, and that's scoped uh, to that if block. If I was to try and do something within here, let's say I had var z equals 20, and then I tried to access the z over here equals 30, I'm gonna get an error because, again, this is scoped within that uh, if statement. So, But we don't need that for a Fibonacci function, so we'll just get rid of that here. And then, of course, what I wanna do now is have an else. So again, I need else colon, and then I will do result is equal to n. And then finally, just to end my uh, function, I'm gonna do a return here, and then I can just pass in Fibonacci a value. So we will put in fib at 10, and then that is gonna return the value. So if I just clear this, we will run this one more time, and you can see it's return Fibonacci at 10 is 55. So now we have if and else statements there, and again, I'm using multiple uh, kind of uh, uses of result and returns which is supported in NIM. Again, super powerful language, right? Again, if I wanted to simplify this further, what I could do is return the end here, get rid of the else statement, and I could turn this result into a return. And then if I clear this, run this, you can see it's back to 55. So again, multiple options on how I work with this. So again, if I wanted to be super accurate with Fibonacci, it doesn't deal with negative numbers in the sequence. So I could turn this into an unsigned integer and make it bigger. So I'll take this in and I'm gonna turn it into uint64. Of course, you see a red squiggly on the end because it's expecting an int. So we'll turn this into a uint64 as well. And then of course there, fib10, because it knows type inference is working again, because it knows it's expecting uint64 here, it's taking that 10 and rather making it uh, an integer, it's turning it into uint64 for us. Uh, again, if I wanted to be explicit, I could put a u here, and then I can tell it explicitly that I'm dealing with uh, an unsigned integer number. But again, it, it knows what we're doing here. So if I just clear this, run it one more time, you see it's gonna come back with 55. So again, type conversions are all working really good. The next thing that we're gonna do is we'll, uh, we'll look at loops for a second. So in particular, I'm gonna look at a for loop. First thing I'm gonna do is count from one to 10. So let's change this. So rather than uh, having this function called uh, fib, we'll call it uh, count two. We'll put a number that we want it to count to. So in this case, it's gonna be n. We'll switch this back to an int. I don't need a return value in this case, so we'll get rid of that. And then of course, because I don't need a return value, I'm gonna turn this back to being a procedure. So it's a kind of proc there. And then for a for loop, really simple. It's just for n in this case, which is my parameter in one dot dot 10. So essentially that saying is uh, the first index that I'm gonna run here is one, and then I'm gonna go to 10. So it's, again, a little bit of a different syntax, but super, super simple. So it's just gonna loop from the number one to 10. And then all I'm gonna do in this case is echo this uh, out. And now, of course, I don't need an echo because it's not a function. So I'm not returning any values. So I'm just gonna call count to 10. We'll clear this and we'll just run uh, nim hello rc. And there you go, one, two, 10.
Yeah, so now that I understand what, uh, how a for loop works, of course I could apply this back to my Fibonacci and then stop doing a recursive for loop and then I could just turn that into an iterative one. So I could do a uh, var a equals zero, b equals a one, and now I could do a for loop. So we are just gonna go uh, in zero dot dot uh, less than n. And now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a little temporary variable, so temp is equal to a, a, a equals b, b equals temp plus b, and then we are gonna return a, and then I can echo. And you can see this quickly here, it's saying it's got a mismatch, it's expected, uh, you know, uh, a un64, so we'll just uh, put a little uh, postfix on there so that it knows it's un64. To go through this quickly, rather than, you know, recursively going through my Fibonacci sequence, what I'm essentially doing is I've set my value zero to one, uh, and then I'm gonna loop through the sequences. So I'm gonna go from zero up to uh, just less than 10, so zero to nine. Uh, I don't need the value. I don't care what the value is. I don't need to track whether it's, I don't need it to be assigned to, you know, this is N or anything like that. I, I don't care what that number is as I go through the for loop, right? So I can just use the underscore symbol to say, okay, just, just loop through. I don't, I, need, I don't need to know what the current loop number is at this point in time. But of course, if I wanted the loop number, then I could just uh, put that in, like put in a, a, a B or something like that. Like I did, yeah, I could just put in, uh, you know, an X or something like that, like I did before. And then all that we're doing here is we're capturing the previous number. So uh, we're uh, taking A, put it as a temporary variable. We set the next value to B, so there. And then the temp is A plus, you know, it's essentially the old A plus B, and that's going to set to the new B. And then essentially that is going to do the equivalent of the recursion, you know, Fibonacci uh, uh, N minus one plus Fibonacci N minus two. So that is the kind of iterative way of doing that. And to do it, we do for loops. So if I run this one more time, you can see it's gonna come back with 55. If I wanted to do more complicated for loop stuff, I could do the old uh, fizz buzz. Um, again, we'll we'll set this back to an in. I don't really want that to be uh, uh, this all the time. So again, if I want to, uh, I can put my for loop in here. So for num in uh, one dot dot n, Again, so in this case, I do want to track the current loop number at the moment. So I'm just going to have num as opposed to that underscore. And then we can do if num mod uh, three equals zero and num mod five equals uh, zero. And, and if that case, uh, we are going to say echo fizz uh, buzz. Now, Let's cover that for a second. If you haven't played the game Fizz Buzz before, then it's gonna count from one to whatever number you put in in this case. So we'll probably run it to, to 15. If the number is divisible by, divisible by three, it's gonna say Fizz. If it's divisible by five, it's gonna say Buzz. If it's divisible by three and five, it's gonna say Fizz Buzz. And then if it's not divisible by any of them, you know, then it's just gonna say whatever the number is. So you can imagine it's gonna go one, two, Fizz, four, a uh, buzz, uh, fizz, seven, eight, buzz, you know, eight, et cetera, all the way. And then once it gets to 15, it's gonna say fizz buzz. So that's how that essentially works. So in this particular example, here's my for loop. I'm gonna go to one to whatever my value is. In this case, it's gonna be uh, 15. We'll change that in a second. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check here and see if num mod three, uh, mod is if it's divisible by three, uh, and num mod five uh, in it is equal to zero. So if it's equal to three and if it's divisible by three and five, I wanted to say fizzbuzz. So, and again, you can kind of see that sort of Pascal influence there. You know, so I'm although I'm using double equals, um, in this particular case, I, I, again, if I was looking at uh, Pascal, it wouldn't do that. In Pascal, it's a single equals, so it's still a C influence there. In, in Pascal, it's a sort of colon equals for assignment. But the and is very Pascal-y, right? So using an and rather than ampersand ampersand for your comparison operators, you know, 
you know, again, that's very Pascal-y there. So in this case, that's fine. Now I need another condition. I need to check if it's divisible by three on its own. So I need an else if, again, so in this case, we use an LF. If you've ever used something like kind of uh, <laughs> VBA or bash, or if you've uh, used something like Algol 68, why would you have used Algol 68? That's kind of where it comes from. Um, then you would be able to do uh, an, an LF, so it's else if. Um, I think, uh, yeah, but again, the influence in this particular case, though, won't be that, but the influence is Python, obviously. Uh, so we'll say num mod three uh, equals, uh, if it's equal to zero, then we will uh, put an echo, uh, we'll put fizz, and then uh, l if num mod five uh, is equal to zero, uh, then we're gonna echo uh, buzz. And again, it's maintaining that uh, Python-esque uh, offside rule indentation piece. And then the last thing I'm going to do there is I, of course, need my colon there. I'm going to do else echo num. So if we save that, a few things I need to fix up here. Uh, first one is I'm not going to return any value. So I'm going to get rid of this. It can't be a func. It needs to be a proc. And then I'm going to call fizz buzz here. And then we'll set that equal to 15 and we just get rid of the echo because I'm not returning any value. It's just a procedure. And now if I run uh, hello.c, you can see one, two, fizz, four, buzz, fizz, seven, eight, fizz, buzz, 11, fizz, 13, 14, fizz, buzz. Yeah, so in this particular case, I've used a for loop. If I wanted to, I don't need to use a for loop. I could just turn this into a while loop. So um, I could say uh, var num equals one. So that would be the equivalent of just put it in it to this one here. And then of course I could get rid of the while loop and uh, add the for loop. And then I could just say while num is less than or equal to uh, n. And then finally, all I would need to do is do uh, num uh, equals num plus one. And then if I just run my code again, you're gonna see one, two, fizz, four, five, you know, buzz, fizz, blah, blah, blah. So you see it works exactly. So instead of using the for loop, I can just use the while loop as before. So they're the two main constructs that you got, for loops and while loops. Okay, so we've done if, elif, uh, and else, of course, the other uh, typical sort of control flow type statement that you have is sort of in the C language, it's kind of switch cases, but of course, in NIM, it's a sort of case statement. So we, let's build a calculator. I think a calculator is gonna bring that to life a little bit. So I'm gonna import a module called uh, stir utils. I will show you what that means in a second, but essentially I'm gonna do some string, uh, calculations and therefore I want to access some of the uh, functions that are available within that module. So I'm going to create a new uh, procedure called calculator and that's going to accept an x int and it's going to accept y int and then it's going to accept an operation which is going to be of a string and it's gonna return uh, essentially nothing because we're just gonna output what the answer is. So if you think about what this is gonna do for a second, this is a calculator type operation where I'm gonna pass in two numbers and then I may wanna do an addition, I may wanna do a subtraction, I may wanna do a multiplication or a division. And then uh, anything else outside of that, it's not gonna do. So, so in this case, uh, I wanna find out based on the operation, what type of calculation I'm gonna do. So in this case, it's case operation. And then you would just say of, and then we'll say add. And then of course, I need to put this sort of call on here, and then I'm back into having scope via the offside rule, so scope by indentation. So I can do echo uh, x. Uh, plus. Now, if I wanted to, rather than doing an echo, I could just return the value, and then I wouldn't need to return a void there, and I can make it a pure function in that sense. But I thought it'd be kind of more interesting just to do the uh, echo within the uh, calculator. Again, you can see I'm using a void in this particular case, rather than not providing it. If I wanted to, I could get rid of the void, and then I could just not return any value. So you've got choices, remember, when you're dealing with procedures in NIMP. So, uh, so if it's an addition, I just want it to do echo x plus y. Of course, if it's subtraction, uh, you know, then I want it to do uh, echo uh, x minus y. And then if it's a, a multiply, 
Actually, let's make that a subtract rather than a subtraction. If it's a multiply, we're gonna echo uh, x uh, multiplied by y. And then if it's a uh, divide, we're gonna do a echo uh, x divided by y. And then of course, uh, if there's anything else there, we are just gonna uh, echo uh, an invalid operation. And now I can read from the console. So we can go uh, echo enter x. And we can say let x equals uh, read line. Uh, so, and again, this is just exactly how we did it before. We're reading from uh, standard input so there. And this is where I'm going to use this um, string util stuff that we were showing earlier. So I'm going to use uh, parse uh, int which is just gonna uh, parse the string value and turn it back into an int. And then we're gonna say echo uh, enter y. And again, we can do the exact same thing, except this time I'm gonna uh, accept in uh, the y value. And then finally uh, enter the op, enter op. And that's gonna be let op equals uh, read line. Uh, standard in as well. And then finally, all we need to do is call our calculator. So we'll just say calculator x, y, and up. So now that I've done that, if I come back into my console, you can see it's going to ask me a question, enter x, uh, y, uh, and then I'm going to do an add in this case, and it's 30. And again, if I run that again, so we could just run uh, hello, uh, we will put, uh, in this case, 30, 20, and then we're going to do a subtract, and then it's going to come back with 10. So there you go. You can kind of see how the case statement is used. It's very similar to a switch or, again, a case operation in, in Pascal. Now, again, there is another operation that's supported. This time it's called when. So if I wanted to, I could get rid of the case, and then I could just go when operation uh, equals uh, add. And then I, I can pretty much do this for everything. Therefore, I don't need the kind of, uh, and we'll just turn that to subtract. Uh, we'll put this as uh, uh, multiply. And we can put this as divide. And we can keep with the same else. And if I clear this, and uh, we can go 10. Uh, y is 5, and then we can say divide, and you see it's going to come back with a 2.0. So in that particular case, works in exactly the same way, but it's a slightly uh, different operation. Again, it's good for sort of inline type operations. Again, case and wins can be a little bit interchangeable.